You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. Hi, I'm Jay Farner, CEO of Quicken Loans, America's largest mortgage lender. Spring will be here soon, so if buying a new home is on your to-do list, right now is the time to call Quicken Loans. Learn about which mortgage options make sense for you and get a jump on your competition. With our exclusive Rate Shield approval, the low rate you lock today is protected for up to 90 days while you shop for your new home. With a Rate Shield approval, if rates go up, your low rate stays locked. But if rates go down, you get that new, even lower rate. Either way, you win. Talk to us today at 800-QUICKEN or go to rocketmortgage.com to take advantage. Here's another great reason to work with us. For a record nine years in a row, J.D. Power has ranked Quicken Loans highest in the nation in customer satisfaction for primary mortgage origination. Again, to lock in today's low mortgage interest rate and get the security of our exclusive rate shield approval, call us today at 800-QUICKEN or go to rocketmortgage.com. For J.D. Power award information, visit jdpower.com. Rate shield approval only valid on certain 30-year fixed rate loans. Call for cost information and conditions. Equal housing lender. License in all 50 states. NMLS number 3030. Hi, welcome to this Subway ad for the new Sesame Ginger Glaze Chicken Signature Wrap. How would you like it? I'll take a... Sports announcer at home? Yeah, how'd you... We just know. My wife picks up the new signature wrap. It's got double the rotisserie style chicken mixed with a sesame ginger glaze. She appears annoyed at me, but she shrugs it off. Those sweet and savory flavors are calling her name. She lifts the wrap and she takes the bite. Incredible. And now she's closing the door on my... Subway, make it what you want. Limited time only at participating restaurants. Double meat based on average six inch sub. I'm little teapot, short and stout. Here is my handle and here is my spout. No, that like this. When I get all steamed up, then I shout, tip me over and pour me out. <laughs> this is WWE superstar Roman Reigns. It only takes a moment to make a moment. Take time to be a dad today. Visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com. So much going on this week. So much happening. It's action-packed. It's action-packed. It's a 1977 action thriller of a podcast. It's the Loftus Party. I am Michael Loftus. Uh, Across from me, across the nation, in an undisclosed location, warming her hands by her gypsy fire is the Liberty Gimlet. How are you doing today? You don't need a fire today. It's ungodly hot. Really? Are you guys just yeah. uh, baking? Are you in the humidity? The humidity isn't too bad today. It's just warm. All righty. Oh. That's good. Enjoy it. I already miss summer terribly. I already miss it terribly. There's a weird thing, and I think it's because I live in the valley in Los Angeles. Like when the earth starts moving around the sun and we start going to autumn, just the light looks different. The shadows look different, and I do not dig it. I do mm. not. Yeah, it bums me out. Uh, I'm not looking, yeah, I, I'm not going to, I'll go, I'll, I'll go down a, a death spiral of despair if I start to think about it too much. I really love summer. It's I, summer. I love the fall. Oh, no. No. Oh, yeah. No. Winter, I'm not so fond of, but the fall, I really like. Okay. I wish I was there. I wish I was there with you. Um, here's some of the stuff that's going on. I'm a little tired today. I'm a, I'm a little, uh, I'm not, I'm not on my A game. I got, I. I stayed up late last night. I did Fox and Friends early this morning, and it was the uh, it was the All Star cast. 
You had you had the Pete Hegseth, you had the Jedediah Bila, and you also had the Ed Henry back. And as nice. I'm sitting there, yeah, as I'm sitting there, it was like a it was like a 350 hit. Uh, that's what they call it. A, they call it a hit. Uh, so I I just stayed up. I just stayed up. You know what are you gonna do? Sleep for 30 minutes? What am I a, a freaking army ranger? So um, were you so particularly like, punchy? I, I'm I'm punchy right now. I'm a little loopy. I see a nap in my future. I see a I see a nap and I see pizza. But here's the deal. I'm thinking about it. Uh, Jedediah is pregnant. She's about to have a baby. She's mm-hmm. about to create life. There's a little miracle. You got uh, you got the Pete Hegseth who swims the Hudson to to raise money for veterans. Mm-hmm. Literally swam the Hudson. And you got Ed Henry who who gave a big hunk of his liver. Uh, to his sister saved her life like they're three like awesome people and I'm, I'm I was the weirdo I was the loser I was the guy who gave the crazy homeless man a dirty look on my way into the studio ah, ah. I thought that was funny how what I were, what were you out. chatting about oh my gosh see I thought this was very funny I thought it was a, it was a fun segment it was a very fun segment we we're talking about uh Chelsea Handler's new Netflix special she has a uh, documentary because she had she famously had that book. Hello. Hello, vodka. It's me, Chelsea. Mm-hmm. She has a new one out. Hello, privilege. It's me, Chelsea. She oh, wants God. to be she wants to acknowledge her white privilege. Did you actually and, have to watch it? Oh, hell no. Oh, no, thank God. nope. Uh, not going to do that. So, yeah, <laughs> she's she's uh, she's talking about white privilege and she wants to be a better white person. And, and there was just so many like phenomenal jokes, uh, the premise, it, like, first of all, I'm like somebody needs to retitle this, call, like call like, hello, Netflix. It's me. You're fired. And then, uh, I would rather watch Dave Chappelle take a nap. I would rather watch, <laughs> Bill, I, would, I would rather watch Bill Burr order office furniture. Mm-hmm. I would rather watch, uh, Roseanne Barr take an eye exam right and it's like and to me it, it's very funny like uh Chelsea Handler doing a special about white privilege and being paid for it probably being paid millions of dollars is like the best example of white privilege I've heard so far like people talk people talk about white privilege like like it's a, like like it's a real thing but like yeah Chelsea Handler going around the country Telling people she's going to try to be a better white person is the is just the most and making them. She did it while she was on tour. She did it while she so she was like doing a stand up tour. So mm-hmm. she's charging people money. She's charging people money to come see her and then talking about how she's uh, she's got, she's the she's the white privileged person and she feels bad about it. You're like literally paying to go get a lecture. Oh man. Oh, it's I, I can't imagine. I can't imagine. Like, who does that? Chelsea Handler. Evidently. No, I mean who like, who's gonna pay to go get a lecture? Like who's the audience? Oh, can you imagine can you imagine being a fan of like the Chelsea Handler show back when she was just some uh you know boozy tramp lady talking smack about celebrities on e entertainment? Right? And you're like, ooh, I'm gonna go see Chelsea Handler and she's gonna dish on everything about celebrities in Hollywood. And then you go and, and she's like, I'm a bad white person. I'm successful because of my whiteness. And oh, I, and You're I will say really this: successful because you used to take off your clothes. Ding, hey, hey, ding, ding, ding! You <laughs> winner, 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 chicken dinner. You have oh. no I, I And I was just about to say this: I'm not going to get into the details. I will not get into the details. But uh, however, <laughs> Chelsea Handler, let's just say she would do anything to get a job. She had a famous, she had a a, a nude video. She, she it was a, like a fake uh, sex tape that mm-hmm. she put out a million years ago. But she was, you know, romping around naked. Yeah, Chelsea, Chelsea would be doing anything for a show. Oh, here's one I didn't get to do on the air. I'm just looking at my notes. Uh, I, I'm saying Netflix has to be freaking out. The the Netflix executives have to be losing it because like Disney has Marvel and Star Wars. And Netflix, what do we got? We got Chelsea Handler, who hates herself for being rich. Right. Uh, yeah. I, it well, was pretty and then funny. you got to look at probably the engagement with Mr. Chappelle's latest, you know, latest uh, act and and Bill Burr's and and 
you just got to wonder, right? I mean, the net, or what is it? The Rotten Tomatoes score on that? You just have to laugh at these people. Yes. The it's, audience loved it at 99%. The critics only liked it at 31 Because you guys, you guys just don't, you don't understand how, like, the vast majority of America thinks. Get out of your bubble. Well, I don't know who it was, but I, they, um, someone had this insight on that. Because, like, to me, the, the ultimate Netflix special would be audience 100, critics zero. Right. <laughs> but someone on Twitter had this insight that, like, these poor, these poor, Fools that like they they had to write something bad about Chappelle's special. Of course they did. Because if if they okay, don't, they're, the they're gonna lose their jobs. Yep. Uh, because of, of the can't. Oh, here was one of my other jokes. Chelsea Handler's one of the four. Ho- Chelsea Handler is one of the four four horse women of the comedy apocalypse. The other three are Joy Behar, Kathy Griffin, and two dudes who are transitioning at Vox. <laughs> Oh, you would have been was killed scary. if you said that on the air. Yeah, that could have been your breakout yeah. moment. <laughs> well, I, it's it's funny. I saw a clip from Bill Burr's special, and he was uh, talking about how stupid uh, feminists were. And he's like, "And I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. You, you're so stupid." Uh, he goes, "Yeah, someday." And he's obviously making fun of him. He goes, "Someday we'll have a woman in the White House," and people start clapping. And he goes, "Hey, you." dummies and he's like he's cussing at him he's like i didn't say anything about her platform or anything are you seriously like uh it was pretty funny and then he gets a big laugh all you care about is that it's a woman yes yeah you're voting you're voting for a vagina and then if then that gets a laugh and then he kind of looks at the audience he goes so this will be the next the last netflix special i ever do (laughs) so so good for billy burr uh Mm -hmm. good for dave Chappelle. Uh, um, I feel bad for Chelsea Handler. There's just a lot of, there's no joke here. There's just a lot of self-loathing. She's done, she did a lot, a lot of things to get famous. And I think she's, she's struggling with some, some demons. And uh, I, but, but wow. I think she's going to, she, she has fooled herself into thinking she's going to find solace in doing her. I I have, I'm, I'm a better white person now. uh, And she won't. And it's just going to get worse. That was my, yeah, she's like, she she is the uh, she's patient zero for Trump derangement syndrome. They should actually take some of her blood and use that to make some kind of an anti venom. You know Vaccine, how you because we, we're <laughs> going to need that in twenty twenty now. I, I I want a landslide. I want a landslide. I'm 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 ready to like I'm ready to go out and grab people off the street and take. You know they say take five people to vote. I'm ready to do that. I'm ready to do that. I, yeah, I, I you guys, Trump you have so to get the vote out in California because even if he doesn't get the electoral votes, we need the popular vote. Mm-hmm. Can't sit home, California, New York. No. If you're conservative, go pull the lever. Yeah, it's uh, I want I got to look into ballot harvesting and find out what's going on in Orange County and all that stuff. I met a a radio guy. The here's what else is going on this week. The the tour starts. Uh, next week the tour starts mm-hmm. next week. We actually have a week, but I met a guy uh, who's who's kind of like uh, an active dude in like trying to organize and get people, and he's all about you know conservatives and Republicans, and he's in the Inland Empire. He is in the the thick of it in California. So mm-hmm. my plan to my pan, my plan to make super friends is is coming right along. It's oh, coming yeah. right along. So yeah, California, you can't you can't stay at home. You got to do. It. You got to get out and vote when that time comes. I'm heading to New York again. I'm heading out on Wednesday. I will be uh, co-hosting The Five on Thursday. Super stoked about that. Super. Because now I know what to expect. Now I know I got the lay of the land. That's going to be a good time. I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. And then on Friday... I will fly to the old hometown of Columbus, Ohio, rent a car, and drive to Lima, Ohio, where I'm doing a show uh, with uh, with a bunch of other dudes. I think Robert Davi's going to be there. Robert Davi's going to be crooning, singing some Sinatra songs. Mm-hmm. Uh, Buffy the Vampire. Christy Swanson's going to be there uh, doing some stuff. We're, we're raising money for uh, veterans. 
who are homeless or they're struggling with drug abuse or have or thinking about suicide. Uh, we're going to try to actually get some boots on the ground and help these men and women out because they really are. You know, you're out there fighting for our freedom when we're going to try to we're going to try to hook you up. So the name of that organization is Honoring American Veterans. You can go to honoringamericanveterans.org. Uh, and check that out. It's not too late. I, I think they still have some tickets. It's going to be a great event. And then the next day, I think I'm going to the gun range. And and I'm I'm very much looking forward to, to the gun range. Yeah, I got to do gotta it. Got to shoot I'm, some things before Beto takes them all. So. Well, that's the perfect transition right there. I've never wanted to buy an AR-15. I've never wanted to buy one of these rifles more than what, than I want to buy it, buy one now. It is really... Blame you. Right? You can't blame anybody. After that uh, display, well, let's talk about this for a let's, let's talk about the democratic debate. Let's talk about the democratic debate and, and what's going on there. And when, and the, we'll, we'll do a deep dive. Cause I think there's some, I think there's some real shenanigans at play. Some real I, shenanigans. Basically my humble opinion is Donald Trump won that debate. Well, here's, Oh, oh my goodness. Oh my good. Like everyone, everyone, and they've been, and, and conservatives have been saying this, like Democrats, they want to take your guns. They want to take your guns. They want to take your guns. And everybody says, no, we don't. We just want common sense. We just want common sense. And then finally you get that goofball, uh, Beto O'Dork. <laughs> you get him out there. Yeah, we're going to take your guns. We're going to take them. We're going to buy them back. And if you don't want to buy them, we're going to take them. We're going to take it. So, so there you go. They want, they want to take your guns. Here's what I think. Uh, is going on, and I forget who it was on Fox News. This was their theory. Uh, it was it was weird to me. I, I felt like Elizabeth Warren was oddly silent. I thought she was very quiet. It's almost like the strategy was uh, let's give uh, Beto O'Rourke a lot of time. Let's give Andrew Yang a bunch of time, and then oh, watch his dude. Who was the guy that went after Joe Biden? The dude. Oh, uh, um Julian Castro. Yeah, what a jerk. What an well, absolute and jerk. He he was lying. That's not what Biden said. And that you know what it was? It was like the amount of times he repeated it. That's what was just like it was so schoolyard. So you don't you don't you don't remember what you said two minutes ago? You you said it two minutes ago. You don't remember it? You just said that two minutes ago. He was just like such an ass and just like highly punchable in that moment. But I think I think uh I think th- there was probably Did you see when when, what? When he finished, Joe Biden turns and looks at Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders leans over and like that's my car. Oh my gosh! Yeah. And it, I really and uh, seriously, I feel bad for Joe Biden now. I, I felt bad. I felt bad for him for weeks, and it's just getting worse and worse. I'm like, he don't. He doesn't want to do this. No, don't make doesn't. him. Don't make him keep doing this because as. As uh, as Julian Castro is like, you said that two minutes ago. Two minutes ago, you said that. You don't remember you said two minutes ago? You can see uh, Joe Biden looks over to Bernie Sanders and he's going, what'd he say? What, what'd, he, what'd he say? And it was like the two old men at the Muppets. It was just, it was awkward and wrong. But I think, I think Bernie and Elizabeth Sanders are kind of laying in the weeds. It's one of those things that's like Survivor. If you ever watched that show? I think they made a little pact, like, "Hey, let's give these young pups, because uh, they got they got to make some moves. They got to say some strong things. So we're just kind of kind of lay back, you know. They're not going to make it to the next round anyway. So we'll just kind of lay back and then take the temperature and see how America reacts to their craziness, and then we'll know what to do as we move on to the next round." I, yeah, I, but there, there's some. You know, they've both embraced the most radical of the radical positions, both Sanders and Warren have, as far as Medi- Medicare for all. Yeah. And last week, I don't know if you saw this, but I'm like, oh, my God, if you're the nominee, you just gave Trump such a gift. Elizabeth Warren endorsed two primary challengers from the Justice Democrats. I don't know this. Uh, you, you'll have to explain. So there's two two members of the House of Representatives, um, Henry Quaylar down in Texas and Dan Lipinski up in Illinois. They both belong to the Blue Dog Coalition. They've had good ratings from the NRA. They they are, you know, Lipinski especially is, is fairly pro-life. 
voted against Obamacare back in the day. Yeah. Um, so they've decided, the Justice Democrats, who gave us Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Ilhan Omar, and, and Rashida Tlaib, um, decided to put up primary challengers for those two individuals. I don't think Quaylars is going to work. He's very popular in his district, and even Republicans in that district would probably go out in the open primary and vote for him to keep this other girl out. Yeah. Um, I think Lipinski might be at a little more risk because they don't have open primaries in Illinois and such. So, um, you know, we'll see. But several months ago, the campaign arm of the House of Representatives had actually put out a rule that if you were a contractor that worked on campaigns and you worked on one of these campaigns, you wouldn't be allowed to work with the congressional committee that has all the money, right? Wow. So they they were trying to put the kibosh on these types of primaries by cutting them off at the knees and not having any any resources to work with, right? Dang, dang, diggity It's very dang. clear Nancy Pelosi and Sherry Bustos, who runs that committee, do not want these kind of insurgent primaries this year because they're trying to market moderate Democrats in purple districts. Yep. So what does Elizabeth Warren, their Democratic colleague in the Senate, go do? She endorses two of the primary challengers that they were trying to put the kibosh on. Nancy Pelosi must be furious. Well, it's it's she's impotent now. What can she do? Nancy Pelosi, uh, the the uh, the the mask is off there. There's no one home. There's no well, seriously, because if, if they were talking about this uh, last night on Bill Maher, mm-hmm. it's uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. You know, she's like, I got I got like five million Twitter followers. And Nancy Pelosi's like, you've only got four votes. But AOC's like, I like, I got five million Twitter followers. She uh, she's setting the agenda. Look how they've all look how they've all embraced the Green New Deal. They all have. Oh, my my version of the Green New Deal, the Green New Deal, the Green New Deal. That's all. That's all AOC. So Nancy's uh, Nancy better start whipping some people into shape or I t- the, the 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 barn is on fire and all the horses are gone. You got. Wow. Yeah, that sounds that sounds like a, a revolt move by uh, Elizabeth Pocahontas Warren. Well, it's a complete revolt move, and her comments on it were just like her at the actual words of her endorsement were just astounding, right? Um, especially against a, a a Democratic colleague who is quite popular in his home district. I I was I I wrote the article an article on it, and I basically said Elizabeth Warren just joined the squad. Donald Trump has been working for months to make the squad the face of the Democrat Party. Yeah, as a as a leading nominee for, you know, a leading candidate for the nomination, she just joined the squad. There she, was. She, like, handed him a nice little gift with a bow on it. Yeah, there is, uh, there is, he is, he is ahead of the curve on all of this. I, I really, like, I look forward to the debates, uh, although I'm a, I'm a little bit concerned about, uh, the Kamala Harris. She was a little... She, you know, she was she was just kind of like a little boozy in the Democratic debate. I could God, see she her was awful. What a freaking authoritarian nut job. She, she's she had some really odd moments on the stage where she was like an old hooker at the airport lounge. She'd had a couple <laughs> cocktails. Oh, Joe, can't we just say yes? Can't we just say was, yes? We did can. Did you see the look on Biden's face? I know. And he's he's like, like, we what? have a constitution. I'm like, oh, my God, a Democrat said constitution. What's going on? Well, that was it, that was just part of the uh, the absolute just insanity of it all. The insanity of it all. No one understands the Second Amendment. No one understands shall not be infringed. And that's that's the thing I was talking about in my my video, too. It's like uh, Beto O'Rourke. He's like, this is a gun. This is a gun that was designed for use on the battlefield. This is a gun that was designed for use on the battlefield. And I'm like, hey, you tool, what do you think a musket was? Like, it's it's not <laughs> right. Like, that's they it, use that's handguns what, on the battlefield too, Beto. It's it's just it's just uh, beyond the and, beyond and the pale. How many people do you think actually own AK-47s? I mean, to get one of those is incredibly difficult. My my brother got one. My brother got one in Ohio. 
uh, right right before the 2016 election. Because this is how it works. He thought there's a good he, – he was, you know, looking at the polls, and he's like, Hillary's going to win. And then the first thing she's going to do is make these guns illegal. So I need to get mine now. I need to get mine now. And that's – uh, and that's uh, very weird that like I'm I'm in the same boat. Like my he was ahead of the curve. I'm like, yeah, I better I better try to get one now. I better try to get one now before uh, they they come and try to take them. Although no, it's not no. it's not going to be Beto. It, 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 that guy Beto's oh, gone. No, no. Andrew Beto, Yang Beto is, is gone. Beto is a symptom of something that's going on in the Democratic Party that I actually find hysterical. Really. Yes. The uh the the uh the the millennials the, no, the, the fairy tale up. the failing up. See what happened when Barack Obama was president is they lost a thousand thirty seats nationwide. Their bench was decimated, right? Yeah. That's why the current leaders for the nomination are also freaking old. They don't have a Ted Cruz, a Marco Rubio, a Nikki Haley. They really don't. So. If you take a look at that, and then you take a look at Stacey Abrams and Beto O'Rourke and now John Ossoff in in Georgia, they've run very expensive campaigns funded from outside their states largely. They lost, and now they want bigger offices. It's like the Peter Principle from hell. Yeah, there is a... (laughs) It's it's disconcerting, but it motivates the people. That's what keeps, you know, the, the AOC. She motivates people. They dangle this uh, this magic carrot, you know. Oh, wouldn't it be great if everything was free? Wouldn't it be great if you didn't have to pay for this? Wouldn't it, wouldn't it be nice? Wouldn't it be nice? And I think there's a there's at least two generations of people who grew up on the. You know, on the Care Bears and sharing is caring, and the Teletubbies, they they really believe. They had and, those. They had those when I was a kid, and I I look at her and I'm like, you're insane. Well, I, I'm saying this a lot lately, but like socialism, everyone, it looks great on paper. The pamphlet is wonderful. The pamphlet is wonderful, and then you bring human beings into the mix, and it all falls to hell because people get greedy and people lie and people cheat and people want more and people punish people like then it all goes to hell. And the next the next thing you know, you got roaming, uh, roving death squads and they're killing everybody who can read a book and they're starving their own citizens and uh, the Ukraine. It's horrible. I, I just it's no one's cracked a history book. There's I, I, I wish there were some more jokes here, but it's like I, it never works. It never works. It never works. We have a piece of good news. Oh, please do I tell. I had to dig up. Do tell. Did you know that Democrats lost 5% of the youth vote in 2016, which was the first election Gen Z could vote in? Well, not to be a uh, array of uh, poopy on this, but isn't that kind of just no one wanted to vote for Hillary? Isn't that just like if you're looking at exit numbers, they're like, yeah, I mean, listen, they did it to themselves. Hillary wasn't a great candidate. And then you had every poll in America going, she's going to win in a landslide. She's going to win in a landslide. That's not a great way to motivate people to go out and and vote. You know, it's like it's a great way to motivate them to stay home. Those young people who did vote, they lost five percent. Now, here's the other thing that's very interesting about Gen Z. And I did a little test at home, right? Yes. So 12% of them and the oldest of them, they started in 96. So the oldest of them is now like 23. Mm -hmm. 12% of them already have retirement funds. 85% of them had savings accounts before they were 10. Yup. That's, that's fantastic. They're avoiding college debt like, like gangbusters. Most of them are working through college to avoid the debt, right? Yep. Or going part time so that they can work. And so I looked at I looked at uh, one of my Gen Zs. Well, I looked at both of them and asked them separately. And I said, "So, your older cousins, the millennials, they got into a lot of college debt. Now the now some of the presidential candidates are saying that we should all be taxed to pay off their college debt." They both looked at me and goes, "That's correct." Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. If we can talk to Gen Z about their pocketbook, 
we got them. It's 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 wonderful. There's a lot of like there's a lot of BS on the internet. There's a lot of horrible apps and stuff. But like as I'm talking to my kids uh, about this kind of stuff, there's some apps that just uh, in terms of what are those little ones that 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 like it'll round up your purchase. Like if if you spend a you know nine dollars and 37 cents on something you put your credit card if you if you have your card hooked up to this app it'll take the change and it'll put that in a mutual fund for you and you mm-hmm. pick the kind of funds that is just phenomenal Genius. that kind of oh it's 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 wonderful I, I i wish i knew the name of the app but i'm like dang you guys need to start doing that like tomorrow because i'm i'm old school i would do that with like change and i would put my change mm-hmm. like in the days before iPhones, you just right. you put your change. You put your change in a in an old coffee can, and then at the you know the end of the year, you're like, "Hey, the can's full. I think I'll take this to Coinstar." <laughs> I think it's wonderful. No, I'm, I've got two kids under twenty five. They both have retirement plans. <laughs> it's it's awesome. Good for I, I them. I mean, I I think it's great. And they yes. did have savings accounts before they were ten. I think yeah. Gen, I think Gen X raised a very different kid. You know? I th- I think so. I think so because somebody well, we're, pretty, we're pretty cynical to begin with and like I know neither one of my kids is a big fan of like big government intrusion and stuff like that. Yeah, well, hopefully, you know, in in your house and my house and houses across America, you're getting a a a healthy dose of reality uh, with everything. But I tell, if you watch MSNBC, like for the kids, for the kids who don't have like parents like us or pe- someone like us in in their lives, if you're just watching MSNBC, oh my gosh, I hadn't I hadn't dipped into MSNBC for a couple days, and I was watching it the other night, and it, it's it's beyond gloom and doom and this goes back to another thing uh in the democratic debate that that i just found like i found it offensive how they're all like well you know there's a white supremacist in the white house oh that well you know that was just so insulting like to me personally like you bastards take it back take it back but with ms that msnbc they're like he's a straight up criminal he's gonna go to jail we're getting like it's it's beyond anything I've ever seen. It's worse than the Russia, Russia, Russia thing because now they know the truth from the Mueller report and they're still doing it and they're doing it more. It's like the Mueller report never happened. Like it never happened. You can't talk about it. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. And like this well, whole, uh, this judge, whole airport, a, the, the airport question. thing in, uh, in Scotland where they're like, yeah, Trump did that. Trump did that. No, that was Obama. That was Obama, my friend, saying use that airport. Go ahead with with Buddha Judge. Basically, he was asked a question, and he basically said, "Yeah, if you vote for Trump, you're a racist." Yeah. Really, butthead. That guy. That guy. How? I I I, I am so sick of him. I am the religious Democrat. I am the most religious Democrat, and all you other religious people don't understand religion. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Yeah, it's it's really really bad. It's uh it, it's it, it's it's there's so much baked in now. Like the the he's in the pocket. Trump's a, an agent of Putin. That's just baked in. He cheated on the election. He baked in. There was a guy, uh, a white supremacist baked in, uh, Nazi fascist baked in. He just rounds up children randomly and throws them in cages. That's baked in. There was a guy. On uh, he's like the one of the, like the senior foreign correspondent for for mm. NBC or MSN, and he was on the eleventh hour with Brian Williams, and he's like, it's just such fear. I've never seen fear mongering like this before, ever. Democracy is dying. It we are witnessing the end of democracy. Putin never knew the dividends that his investment in destroying culture and the world as we know it france might hang on france has a couple of years left england is gone england is ring run by fascists now england the the democracy will never return it was like speaking in such absolutes and it's uh it's what it is is he's saying it's it's white supremacy but now the the code word for white supremacy is populism 
That's what that's what they're calling it now. That's what they're calling it now. And it's just terrifying. It's terrifying. And you should be afraid because this is it's it's everywhere. England is gone. France might hang in there. The U.S. a few more years, maybe it was. If you're watching that show, you're terrified. You're buying a bunker. You're buying a bunker in South Dakota. You know how you get populism? How? Which is not white supremacy. You, like, do things like say you're going to fix the border every year since the 1980s and do nothing. You ask the entire population to vote as to whether or not you're going to stay in the European Union. They say, get out, and you drag them along for three years. Yeah. That's how you get populism. You tell people, boy, we're going to get into these really great trade deals. We're going to get into these really great trade deals with all these other countries, and everything's going to be fantastic. And then it isn't, and all of the factories close down, and all of your friends are out of work, and, and all the jobs are gone to some foreign land. That's how you get populism. Did you people see are like, that these, these morons don't know what they're talking about. What, no, what 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 horrific thing on the I view? For, there was a congressman that Joy like, Behar in a G string. Ew! Why would you say that? Because that's that's my go-to joke for horrific horrific thing on the view. Oh, well, I don't think Whoopi looked very good in one either. Uh, you know what? At least here's here's the deal. Whoopi would own it. She would own it. She would have swagger. You'd be like, Whoopi, I still love you. You could. Right. You're that. You're that cute girl from Ghost. <laughs> um, but yeah, joy. No, there'd be there'd there was be there was a congressman and... who went on the View with his wife, and he's from somewhere in the Midwest, and they have like eight kids. And I'm like, why would you go on the View? And so they're talking about how their towns are coming back, and people are employed, and and. This is wonderful. They can take care of their families. And Joy Behar literally looks at these people and says something to the effect of, but those jobs are really bad for the environment. Why would you want to take those jobs? (laughs) I'd give up a job like that. (laughs) I'm like, what? (laughs) You elitist freak. Such a New Yorker. Such a New Yorker. Just living in her bubble. It's it's. It's crazy. All these like they're always like New Yorkers or Washington people like they really they really don't they think the world needs to be exactly as they it's sitting in their ivory tower, judging everyone, making these grand decisions. I you shouldn't have a job like that. That's a bad job. It's bad for the environment. Screw you. Screw you and the yellow cab you rode in on. Yeah, and that's New York City. The rest of the state is actually a lot more like the Midwest. Uh, oh my gosh, <laughs> it's it's shockingly beautiful. It's mm-hmm. shockingly beautiful when you get out uh, on Long Island and you start going east, uh, and you start you know getting away from the bigger neighborhoods. You get east of like Beth Page and uh, Massapequa. Holy cow! Holy cow! And then when you get to upstate New York, gee, many Christmas. Just insanely gorgeous. That's a that's one of the well kept. You know what else has some nice areas? And I might as well just out these people. New Jersey, New Jersey. It's almost like they Not use <laughs> they they use they use Newark as a as a as a uh, 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 like a deflector shield. <laughs> they, yeah. they, I think the people in New Jersey, granted their taxes are horrible. And, all that stuff. But like they're like, yeah, it's all like it's all like Newark. It's all oh, it's just one big Newark. It's just all and then you you go out by the ocean and it's just like, holy crap, there's some really, really nice places in New Jersey. You see it's Corey, shocking. Booker, Corey Booker trying to talk about how great a job he did in Newark. Oh boy. As as they're trying to get the lead out of all those pipes. God. Yeah, he did. He did a wonderful job. He did a wonderful job. That's the yeah. other thing that I keep coming back to that I just can't. I just can't get over it. And I, I don't think you can say it enough. It's it, it to me. It's never boring. Like none of these people have ever created anything. It's all a theory. Except it's Andrew all a theory. Yang. Yes. Yes. And I loved his Yang. little sweepstakes. That was pretty good. That was a great idea. That was a great idea. And now, I unfortunately, know. here's here's the scary thing. 
but I think I think Andrew Yang is way ahead of the curve and he's just not messaging it right. But philosophically, we're going to have to think about this yeah. we, as as automation takes over, as more and more robots come in, as there's more and more AI in our lives, a lot of jobs will disappear and you will have a large part of the population that's like, I want to work. I want to work. There are, there are literally no jobs. So what do you do with those people? I mean, I don't think we're there yet. And I don't think, and I think that's why I think Yang is uh, ahead of the curve. However, like the, a basic living wage, I just don't think it, it works out. I think we stagnate as a, as a, as a society, as a, as a, as a race of people. I think there's something in our human nature that wants us to explore that that wants us to work and do and build and create and if you're just you know it's 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 idiocracy it it really it's that movie where you're just paid to sit around and laugh and watch morons on tv and eat cheese doodles (laughs) water like from the toilet like we'll just become a, a race of morons that's why I'm. I, I got all my money on on Elon Musk. Come on, Elon Musk. Come on, Virgin Galactic. Come on, NASA. Come on, somebody. But we have to. We have to get off this planet. We have to get off the planet. We have to start colonizing other places just to give us something to do. Just to keep there us busy. Go. It's seriously. It's like handing a, a three year old uh, a coloring book. <laughs> you know, just just color. That'll. That's what space exploration should be. Just, hey, just get on the ship and go. Just get on the ship. Start building something, whatever you got. What are they, there's, there's dirt. All right, make big make big mounds of dirt and then dig in the dirt and we'll figure it out later. But we just need to begin. We just need to begin. Holy, well, sp- ooh, I, I don't want to brag. I think there's another big mistake they're making, though. Oh, the ooh, what's the, what is it? What is it? Trying to keep Tulsi Gabbard under wraps. Like, as far as a younger democrat that could appeal to left-leaning centrists and libertarians she's it i mean she actually will say she loves america she thinks america is an exceptional country she's still in the national guard she's got some wacky ideas on foreign policy but that goes right with the diehard libertarians i listen i i'm not i'm not I, i'm not hating on T- tulsi gabbard i'm really not i'm right there you with guys you guys tell me she's hot <clears throat> well, uh, she's she's done some adorable things. She's pretty. Uh, she did a little video with her husband where he's like playing the ukulele yeah. and they're walking down this hallway singing together. They're a cute couple. They're a cute couple. Uh, here's here's the problem though, and and it'll be interesting to see. It would be, be far more interesting if it was a foreign country and not our country. But the the media, the Democrats, and the public school system have created this monster. That they don't know how to control. And it's just it's just it's run away because they have kids in school now. You know, climate change is real and this is all happening. And if we don't do something, we're all dead. And and the man in the White House is trying to kill us all. And they, they all have to run with that. And so they're only they're only platform. The only thing they can go, I'm going to make your life better by putting the government in charge and taking care of you and socialism and all this. Stuff. They I don't know if there's room for Tulsi Gabbard's anymore. And like I you know, were talking about earlier with she even wants a border. So let's say just for the sake of this this discussion now, let's say that it is a red wave in 2020. Let's say, uh, you know, Trump's elected in a landslide and we win back uh, the House, House. And, and everything's wonderful. Do the Democrats uh, regroup and go, oh, we, we see now where we went wrong or do they double down? I Don't think they you think they would have done that after 2016 if they were going to do it. That's what I'm saying. They're going to double down again. Yeah. If you no, look at, if you it, look at the media, the media's gonna be, response it's not going to be pretty at all. So it's just going to get worse and worse. Mm-hmm. Is what I'm saying. That's it. Uh, listen, it'll be very interesting to see uh, what happens. I, I want. I want. I want Trump to get reelected. I want that. I want to get the house back. And boy, mark my words now. If uh, if those guys don't get spending in, under control, let's say Trump wins. Let's say we get the house and the Senate. Boy, if those guys don't do something about the the spending and the budget and all that, ooh, 
Oh, I'll be so mad. I'll be I've so heard mad. Whispers that that entitlement reform is in his second term when he doesn't have to run for re-election. I hope so. I hope so. Because uh, if not, it's bad. But traditionally, well, when you know they who all else hope there, so, Gen Z. <laughs> let's yeah. Let us hope. Let us hope. Okay. So uh, it was a it was a wild. When's the next debate? When's the next one? I don't, I don't even know, know what the schedule is. There's going to be like 12 of these, and I almost feel like I just want to stop watching them. I well, know I have to watch them. But, yeah. Ah, uh, just it is, tedious. It is. It is tedious, but it'll it'll see them. It'll be still, I think, interesting to watch them try to, you know, keep moving farther to the left, keep moving to the farther left, and poor even Joe Bill Biden. Maher, even Bill Maher thinks they're nuts. Oh, he he got into it with Michael Moore the other night. He got into he, it with Michael Moore, and he got uh, he and he was on Morning Joe. Go check out that clip. <laughs> well, at least at least every once in a while, Mar will surprise you. He he will surprise you. Oh yeah, and no, he's good he's for him. Totally realistic on like um radical Islam, free speech, all of that stuff. He he's not with the left on that at all. Yeah, so, good I mean, for he, him. Yeah, he, he he he's he's an honest broker. He actually will break ranks, but I mean, he just basically said they're more terrifying than Trump. Wow, I was so guns. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna and he's and Kamala Harris's comment was just terrifying. Which was like, that's what? really the way she thinks. I think her can is. I think her candidacy is over now. Kamala? Oh no, no, oh, no, yeah, no, no, no. Day no. after she she's not raising any money anymore. What did she say? What was her comment that that put it over the top? That whole thing where Joe Biden had made comments in the press that, you know, on Kamala Harris, every time she's putting forth a plan, she says this will happen in the first hundred days or I'll do it myself. He said presidents have limited power. So they asked him about that comment. He explained it. And then they gave Kamala Harris an opportunity to answer. And that's when she said, Oh, I would just say, Joe, don't say no, we can't. Say yes, we can. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, that's, uh, that is uh, her, I guess she's going to, you know, be like, I got a, I got a paper and a pen. I'll, maybe she's thinking she'll do it by executive order or something. Yeah, I, no, I, I think her candidacy is over. One of her campaign surrogates said the day after the debate that the money's just not coming in. Well, it's that, and it's the way she's talking. It's like an actor. An actor learns, like, these tricks to make themselves, like, they find out, oh, if I make this face, people like me, or if I do this kind of thing, people like it. So they start to do it all the time. And that's where Kamala Harris is with her little head bob back and forth, little laughing. It it's, sounds it's, she's, so condescending. It is. She's like an, I'm telling you. She's like an an over the hill uh, prostitute at an at, at a, a Los Angeles airport lounge. Come on, Joe, don't you want one more poke before you go back to Vermont? It's just, and I think I think she but she obviously thinks it's endearing and charming, and I just kind of find Awful. it sad. Yeah, it's like some weird remake of the Days of Wine and Roses. I need to drink, Joe. I can't look at the world in reality. I gotta wear my rose-colored glasses. Okay. Uh, oh my gosh, they're coming at. We're, this is a big switch in gears here. They're coming after uh, Brent Kavanaugh again. Yeah, there's I have a, a theory. A, oh, bring it. So he. Oh, just to catch you guys, in case you didn't know, there's a, a New York Times reporters. They, they've written another book about, oh, how he is a he's a horrible rapist man. And he got away with all the raping of the rape people and just rape, rape, rapey, rape, rape. The eyewitness was a lawyer for Bill Clinton during his impeachment. And the supposed victim has no recollection of the event. And they still published a book. That's uh, it's uh, well, my theory. Y- yeah, something is really wrong with Ruth Bader Bader Ginsburg and they know it and they're terrified that Donald Trump will get another nomination. Wow. Well, I mean, I would have to say that they are. That's a second battle with pancreatic cancer. That is one of the most 
deadliest cancers in the world. It's that's the one that uh, it, it takes people out. Just like it's like flipping a, we, a light. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I mean, Steve Jobs, one of the richest men in the world, was dead in like two months. Yeah. Yeah. My 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 boy Patrick Swayze didn't do too well. It's very strange. Didn't is wasn't that the one that Pat Sajak had too? Didn't he have pancreatic Not Pat cancer? Pat Sajak. Um, um. Alex Trebek. Deputy. Yeah, Alex Trebek. Well. Uh, I don't, I don't want know. anything bad to happen to her. I'm just saying I have a little bit of a healthcare background, and I'm kind of like, huh. I think the lung was metastasis. I think they're not telling us the truth, and I think these people are terrified. Um, you can't impeach a Supreme Court justice for behavior they exhibited prior to becoming a justice. You can only impeach them for behavior. That's not going to stop the Democrats. I That's know not it's gonna not going to stop them, but it's just it, it 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 is just like, do you guys not remember the lead you had going into 2018? It was like a 13 point lead with the general electorate. They pulled that with with Brett Kavanaugh, and it was a dead heat going in. As far as enthusiasm, they woke up a whole bunch of Republicans. Well, it's you really think going after him again is a good idea. They keep doing this stuff where it's like every boogeyman, every boogeyman that that a conservative told his kids about is is coming out from under the bed. You know, the Republicans are like, hey, there's a boogeyman uh, and he wants to take your guns. He wants to take your guns. And the liberals are like, there's no such boogeyman. And then out comes Beto O'Rourke. We're coming for your guns. And then and then you got Republicans are like, hey, there's a. There's boogeymen, and they'll say anything the, to to her, you know, smear your character, character assassin. They'll they'll do whatever it takes uh, to win these battles. Oh, there's no such thing. And then they come forward, Christine Blasey Ford, and all these other, uh, you know, half baked things. Lawyer? So that boogeyman is real. It's 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 much worse than anybody thought. Did you see her lawyer? <laughs> that little clip. Yeah. That Blasey yeah. Ford was motivated to do it because of Roe versus Wade? Yeah, and she was ready to go. Who was the guy who was going to be nominated before uh, Kavanaugh? There was another guy from that part of the country, and she was yeah. like ready to She was ready to accuse that dude of the same thing. And then when he wasn't the nomination, mm, she had to hold off. And then, ooh, Kavanaugh, this will work. It was just, yeah, it was all politically motivated. I can't remember. There's it no witnesses. Is. It was like. Oh, yeah. This new book is a total political hit. Mm-hmm. You take a lawyer. Kavanaugh was on Ken Starr's team during the Clinton impeachment. So yeah. now you have a lawyer for the Clintons during that period of time who went to school with Kavanaugh now saying he saw what? Yeah. And the girl it supposedly happened to said, yeah, I have no recollection of that whatsoever. It for it looks like they will say or do anything just to because politics is that important. Politics is that important, and you know it doesn't matter if we can't uh, you know base our arguments in reality. We will just literally make things up out of whole cloth to stop you. It's really it's it's really quite disturbing. It's really quite disturbing, and your only hope in this world. If you haven't kept a, a calendar of where you've been since you were eight years old, uh, is to be rich enough or connected enough uh, to escape justice. To a, I know people well, are all it looks like they're coming for Andy McCabe. I don't see. L listen, I, I I don't know. Has the grand jury hasn't the grand jury been hearing about this case? Uh, and then they didn't they didn't agree to okay, prosecute next. on Friday. Let's hope no, something well, happens tomorrow. Well, Andrew McCarthy. Um, wrote an article over the weekend, and he said grand juries rarely ever return no bills because they know they're not convicting someone. And he went through like five or six different scenarios that were probably more likely than them delivering a no bill. So it ah uh, it is um and this is when it comes down to like like philosophically like a a a, a quest for truth. But like with with everything with with Hillary Clinton and the emails and all that stuff and she skates 
you can go and even though you know okay so she gave them to Huma Abedin print these out you shouldn't do that with you know but but she skated you and I would go to jail we would go to jail we'd go to jail we'd go to jail and then you got Comey and like well they weren't classified when he had them he shouldn't have done it we frown upon that but Comey states and now you've got uh, Andy McCabe you know what he wasn't forthcoming they didn't they're not calling him a liar they're saying what isn't the 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 his official thing is he wasn't forthcoming the ig said he lied not not just once more than once and then disciplined people in the southern district of new york for the leak that he made so <laughs> what happens what happens if he does not get in trouble what happens if the grand jury comes back and says you know what he's a good guy and we need we need uh, good people, and you shouldn't be punished, and this is political. What happens then? I th- First of all, he leaked cl- the investigation of Clinton. It hurt Democrats. So this isn't a Trump thing. No, I'm just saying, like, what happens? Because t- well, the left, the left if- is going to ring all the bells. Oh, my gosh. Andy McCabe, he barely escaped. Thank God. Thank well, God he escaped because Trump was trying to get him. And Trump needs to pardon Papadopoulos and Flynn because they're going through hell for the same thing on a much smaller scale. And then, yeah, I just, I, it's, I'm, I'm interested, like, to see, like, what, what the spin will be. Because if you ask me, if he, if he pardons those guys, which he should, they'll go, oh, look at this, the, uh, the mean little dictator is stomping his feet. I, I, I'm really, and I don't want to lose hope. In our justice system, oh, I but, think, it, but I think it becomes. Flynn, I think Flynn's going to get off. His new lawyer is on the war path. I hope material so. That, well, no, the government supposedly has exculpatory material called Brady material that they did not turn over to him before he pled. Well, I, w- I would love it. Deal. And the judge, I would is not love it. Happy. I'm just it's very it's just very disheartening when you think, OK, well, something's going to happen with uh, with Comey. Uh, no, I guess not. And then Comey's like, and, and I'm sorry, would be thankful, would be nice. And it just it, it makes you crazy. And if McCabe, if McCabe doesn't get in trouble, the, uh, you start to worry. You start to worry. Well, I can't say I'm not worried, but the other very plausible scenario that McCarthy put out, out there is um, Durham's investigation is ongoing. He has subpoena power and other things. So the Justice Department may not be putting this in front of the grand jury right now. They may be pending Durham's investigation because they know other stuff. I hope so. Mm-hmm. I hope so. But I don't want to be – If uh, in a lot of ways I look at this as like, am I thinking about this – the way the liberals were thinking about the Mueller investigation. Am I, am I seeing things that aren't there? Am I hoping for things, you know, cause like the liberals like, Oh, now they got them. They got Papadopoulos. They got Flynn. This is the beginning. The whole house of cards, the noose is tightening. Am I doing the exact same thing, but on the other side of the coin, Oh, they didn't get Comey for some weird reason. Like, is there some, I'm just putting it out there. Uh, you know, maybe, but as I'm seeing the documents come out and the inconsistencies in them and Brennan being very quiet, um, you know, the other thing is McKay might, might flip. He seems like a flippy kind of guy. Well, and just, just Comey. He, he said he got permission from Comey to do that leak that he did. So he's already thrown Comey under the bus once. He's a very self-serving individual. I, uh, it'll be it'll be interesting to see. That's I have to try to distance myself from it and like not take it personally, but like I'm not getting <laughs> overly hopeful. But gee golly gosh, there was a time when Americans in general would have looked at the behavior of these people um, at the FBI and in the intelligence community and what actually went on. And we would have been horrified. This is so much worse than Watergate in so many different ways. Oh, I I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. But mm-hmm. when you don't have when you don't have the media screaming, it's Watergate. It's Watergate. <clears throat> it's you, you, it's you just uh, you, you you feel like the weirdo when you're like, wow, this is this is like weaponized government. It's horrible. Blah blah blah. blah. And then if you look at well, whatever. Uh, well, I, I mean, just all the cover the butt stuff that's gone on this week, right? The spy. That was supposedly so close to Putin that he never got anything right. 
Brennan burned him back in 2016. Now you got reporters going to his house and he's living under his own name. This sounds kind of fishy to me. <laughs> and they're so they're trying to obfuscate something with all of that. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And then today something came out for, or today or yesterday, something comes out from Schiff regarding the ICIG and the Department of Justice's reticence to turn over some whistleblower documentation. And Schiff just goes right to they're obviously covering up for the president or someone high up in the administration. Yeah. And then if you scroll back in your timeline, the other thing you see is Horowitz has told the Department of Justice and Congress that his report is finished and it's going through the classification process. So they know that report is coming and then all this garbage starts coming out. And it's all it's, garbage. That's the thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's ah uh, God. God bless the people who have their eyes on the ball. God bless the people who are like trying to look at the at the at the big picture. It's nutty. It is nutty. I mean, they've, every time something's been gonna come out, they throw something out there. Yeah. Like with the yeah. Comey thing, then it was emoluments again with the stupid hotel in Scotland. Oh and if my you get gosh. the details on that, uh, Byron York actually did a short podcast on it. it. Cost them like 96 pounds to stay there for a night. They're probably staying there at a loss. Yeah. Okay. The president writes a $400,000 check back to the government when his salary is paid. In 2017, for the hotel in D.C., they gave $146,000 back to Treasury for profits on government-related stays. Like, where is he making money on this? Nowhere. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's crazy. But it was, yeah, the other night on MSNBC, it was all emoluments, emoluments. Oh, the emoluments, the emoluments. They're, they're wrapping themselves up. And little Jerry Nadler, that, oh, that dude, they all. The the impeachment inquiry that isn't an impeachment inquiry that could be an impeachment inquiry that they'll have to consider about an inquiry three months from now. Oh, my God. Like, Representative Doug Collins, the ranking member on the Republican side, just ripped them. If you haven't heard that clip, guys, I, I'm, I'm kind of a Doug Collins fan. Go listen. That's, I, will, I, will, I will search that out. I will search that out in, in mere moments. In mm-hmm. mere moments. Uh, so I, I want to leave on this. I want to leave on this. It's been a fantastic show. And then thanks, everybody, for listening and telling your friends. And everything's going wonderfully. And make sure you watch The Five on Thursday. Now watch. I'll get bumped. Uh, I, I want to say this happened to me the other day <clears throat> at uh, at my local supermarket. And I want to start a think tank on this. We got to figure out something else. This is such a, a hard left. We got to figure something else uh, for the Boy Scouts to sell. I felt so bad. This I, I'm I'm walking into the grocery store, and this little kid in the Boy Scout uniform is like, "Hey, would you like to buy some popcorn?" And I'm like, "How about on the way out?" Now you know the Girl Scouts are out there every year, and they're selling cookies, and it's like five dollars a box. You can get like f- four boxes, or f- sometimes five boxes for twenty bucks. It's a freaking, it's not a bad deal. It's not a bad well, deal. And they're Girl Scout cookies, right? They're pretty darn delicious. Yeah, those Samoas, I, I tell you. I come out of the, the grocery store, and I stop by, because my kids were in Scouts for a while. I stop by. They got, like, a, a, a bag of chocolate-covered popcorn. Not that big. They want $25 for a bag of popcorn. For a bag of chocolate-covered. I'm like, uh, so the, the little kid, he remembered me. Because I'm like, yeah, I'll get you on the way out. So he's watching me the whole time. I end up handing the dad like five bucks just so he can, so the little kid can see some money, you know, mm-hmm. change hands. Like he was a successful little salesman, but I'm like, there's no way I'm buying this. Like, that's crazy. Who Who's going to buy a $25 bag of popcorn? Like, I don't care where that money is going to like they, they des And, and I tell you the poor little kid. And I'm thinking what kind of damage is, is happening to this little kid? Because no one's going to buy this crap. He's like seven years old. Hey, mister, you want to buy some popcorn? And everybody's going, no, 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 thanks. So that's like crushing his self-esteem. So we got to we got to figure something out uh, for the Boy Scouts to sell. It's a train wreck out there. It's a train wreck. Twenty five dollars. I was I was what what in in what universe in what universe 
Did somebody spend twenty five dollars on a on a bag of popcorn? Good lord I, in heaven! I, I don't know. We had um. Remember when we were little and we were in groups like that, soccer teams, whatever, and we had to go around and sell stuff to help pay yeah. for our travel? Yeah. You don't see that anymore, really. And so a little eight-year-old girl came to the door and was selling stuff for her school, and I bought, like, five things. because Kids don't do that anymore, and the fact that her parents let her out of the house to do it and she was actually out there, I'm like, yeah, I'm just going to buy some stuff. There are they they ne- they never stopped in California. They don't go door to door, but they're always in the grocery store parking lot. They're always uh-huh. in and and they're never by the front door. Like the the Girl Scouts, the Boy Scouts, they're right there by the front door. Like the, so, the manager knows they're there. In in California, it's always a couple shady looking kids who are in the parking lot. Right. And they're like, you want to buy this candy bar? Because my my school's going on a field trip to Spain. And I'm like, yeah, what, what class is this? What class? Uh, <laughs> it's like, right. it's just like a couple kids who like stole some candy bars who are just hustling. No, these were, <laughs> these were, these were books like magazines. Oh, that's, oh, you are on a list now, sister. I got some you, kitchen stuff. You are on a list now with you the know, magazines. It's, it's Cause you don't see kids doing that anymore. I think it teaches something. And I think the fact that they're going out and knocking on people's doors and, and, and having to interact with them is fantastic. So yeah, if I become that lady in the neighborhood, I'll buy anything out of any book you got. I'll do that. (laughs) There you go. I think you're right. I agree. (laughs) It's, it's a skill, it's a skill that like Mm -hmm. as a kid, Oh my gosh, I had a paper route and I had to, I had to go collect. And there was people who were like ducking me. And you know they're home, and you're like, I'm yep. gonna keep, I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep knocking, dude. I'm gonna keep knocking. I, I saw you in there. Two dollars. I was seriously. That's why that was so funny. That's why that was. So, I know. Because like, there's a part of me that I totally respected that kid. That was man. I want my two dollars. That was the funniest callback. Mm-hmm. Oh my god. Better off dead. Better off dead. Yep. Right. Yep. Two dollars. I love guys, that whole movie. It's fantastic. It that was and Hot Tub show. Time Machine. Cinematic haven't, triumphs. Haven't seen Hot Tub Time Machine. Yeah, I got to get too. on that. Oh, my gosh. I watched Kill Bill Volume 1 last night. Mm-hmm. That movie holds up well. Holds up well. Made me angry about Star Trek or Star Wars. Because I'm like, right. ooh, uh, ooh, ooh, the, the, the Force Awakens, the Return of the Jedi, the da 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 the Last Jedi. You just can't handle a strong female lead. You just, you're just, you're just afraid of a strong female lead. I'm watching Kill Bill last night. <laughs> I'm like, that's, they did Not really. Two- I'm not really. I loved Alien. I loved Aliens. Uh, Kill Bill's fantastic. Oh my gosh, that Quentin Tarantino. He's talented. Okay, we got to go. We're running long. It was a great show. Thank you so much. Uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Make sure you go into the Facebook page. Oh my God, I put the funniest thing on the Facebook page, you guys. It's one of those things where you put in the first letter of your your name and the last letter of your last name and the day you were born and the month you were born, and it makes like a social justice warrior. Uh, doctoral thesis thing for you. You, you, It's hilarious. It's hilarious. And it's just random. It's one of those like baloney thesis generators. It made me howl with laughter. Okay. Uh, Next week, I'll be coming to you from somewhere in the Midwest. Next Sunday, uh, when we record, I think I will be in Des Moines getting ready for the Freedom to Laugh shows. With Chad Prather and Reno Collier, I'm very much looking forward to these. I hope there's very a much. presidential speaking event. That would be great. You guys can go troll it. Please videotape it if you do. Please. I, oh, I got to talk to Prather about that. All right. I'm going to let you go. I'll see you guys next time.